welcome. I'm Ann Myrie with Quilt as Inspired and today we're going to be working on some sashiko. But before we do that, I thought it was high time that we put some of these cross craft skills we've been talking about into one great project that we can work on together as our 2018 winter stitch along. Um, this is a perfect example of a project that looks really difficult to make but really when you break it down and work it into smaller sections you see that it's really not that difficult plus it's so fun because there's no monotony you know we're, we're working on different materials with different techniques and um, the fun part for me is putting it all together into one cohesive piece so um, I promise you won't get bored um, and so with that I give you Mandala Unplugged What's so great about this project is that anybody can do this. So we're not using any machines or any complicated high-tech equipment. We're just using meditative, relaxing, slow stitching with our hands to get us through the rest of these winter months. It is a 16-inch quilt block that originated from a basic iPad drawing I did of a mandala, which you can see here. Um, so looking at them side by side, the drawing is um, just an idea, you know, obviously there's no pattern or anything. It was just some colors that I used and um, different shapes and different lines. Each motif, each part of the drawing I put into a, uh, a textile. So whether it's applique or maybe you can see some knitting here, some crochet, some embroidery. Um, it's a really fun way to translate a drawing into a textile piece. A mandala is a spiritual symbol in Buddhism for the universe. It's a decorative piece, but also it's a useful tool that can be beneficial for focus during meditation. This project starts January 1st, 2018, which actually is on Monday, um, and then the rest of the videos, of course, will be on Sunday. But I wanted to give you a chance to gather materials from this list, so that's why I'm showing it to you now here in early December. Um, I have a very limited number of kits available on my Etsy shop as of today and regardless of when you order they will ship out on December 18th. So everything that's shown here in blue is what is included in the kit. The supplies and the materials shown in black are what you would want to have to gather. Even if you're getting the kit um, there are some things that aren't included that you'll want to get. So, um, so make sure you're making a note of that and the yardage and, and the amounts and everything. Um, when you look at the kits on the Etsy store, please note that these are bits and pieces of what the kit will have and are meant to show color. So in other words, there is more to the kit than what is shown. It's just that I wanted you to see the color way that, that um, each of the kits would have. And the kits are $75. So if you're watching this and you've missed out on a kit, um, no worries. Remember, you probably have many of the materials at home, so please try and use what you have. It's such a great feeling to to be able to use stash. If you know you're going to work this and you want a materials list emailed to you, let me know. Please email me at nittycat at comcast.net. Let me know you're going to join us and I'll add you to the list. And if we get enough people, I'll start a, a private Facebook group so that we can communicate, share photos, and help each other. It is so fun to connect with other stitchers working on the same project, um, and especially in different colorways and, and Definitely, if you're using your own materials, it would be so fun to see what you come up with um, using the same techniques, the same motifs, or even different ones. Of course, I'm always a proponent of you adding or subtracting the things that you want or you don't like or whatever. Um, and hey, if the mandala isn't your thing, that's totally okay. Still tune into the tutorials because you'll find more advanced techniques for um, knitting, crocheting, embroidery, and beadwork that you can really use for any project. So, um, so not to worry. If you're not doing the pro the project, that's that's totally fine. Um, I just hope that you you still find the um, the videos informative. Um, for you. And then if this is, you know, if you're watching this long after we've done this project, you know what, it's still okay. You can still do it uh, because the next, I think, uh, I think I'm trying to try to do this over the next eight to ten videos um, will be in consecutive order. So you could do this so anytime. Mandala Unplugged starts actually with big stitch hand quilting. Um, which is very similar to Sasha Co. And I have worked a little bit of Sasha Co. Here's a piece that I did. Um, 
for a quilt that I did for Sakwa's Wild Fabrications back in 2015. It's been traveling for the last couple years. And actually, this piece sold the first day in Houston, so I'm super thrilled. It was my first time doing Sashiko, um, and I just wanted to do something kind of cool for the background. This is a quilt called Gifts from China, and um, it's kind of funny because when I first did this quilt, I had marked... Uh, just with a ruler and a erasing pen, um, all of the lines. And of course, by the time I got done, you know, halfway through the stitching, all of those lines were disappeared. So <laughs> I'll never do that again. I am all about the white chalk and the Frixion pen. Uh, of course, the Frixion pen, beware, it does leave a residue on the back. So you've got to use that in situations where you know it's going to be okay. Um, but anyway, for Sashiko, it's chalk all the way. Sashiko is a Japanese technique that is beautiful. It's rich with history. The stitch that the Japanese used in the northern region where it was really cold and poverty stricken and they used this stitch to work boro which is it translates to worn and tattered clothing I believe. Um, it was used to make their garments stronger and warmer and you know up until I've studied Sashiko I always considered embroidery to be just strictly decorative. But when you look to the history of Sashiko and when the farmers and fishermen could only use indigo and brown and gray in their clothing, and they used Sashiko from their ancestors' clothing to, to patch and to make it stronger, it is incredible how really this, this art form was also as functional as it is beautiful. So this folk art is one of my most favorite things and I'm really enjoying playing around with it. And I wanted to show you a couple of ways to stitch um, and quilt with Sashiko because they did use Sashiko to, to quilt their layers together essentially. Um, and again, this is how Mandala Unplugged starts by hand quilting the initial design. You can see here, this is what it looked like after I worked Sasha quilting. That's kind of what I've dubbed my, <laughs> when I use Sasha Coat to quilt it, I call it Sasha quilting. So you, you really just need a few basic materials to work Sasha Co. Um, you need a needle and thread, obviously. Um, I've got some, I just ordered these. Actually, I've never really used Sasha Coat needles. I've always just used the needles that I had, which is fine. Uh, the sew line chalk pencil is super great because this will transfer your patterns. Um, the other thing that I am in love with is the Sorel, Sorel transfer paper, which has been around forever. Comes in all these different colors, and of course white is great for um, uh, sash coat transferring, and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. Um, I have got some indigo linen here, and I mentioned farmers before. and fishermen were actually not allowed to wear anything bright, and that's why you see so much Sashiko with um, indigo or gray background in white stitching. And that, um, obviously, you know, modern times have, has changed, and we're all working Sashiko, uh, or, you know, what we call a running stitch in all kinds of different colors and thread combinations and fabric combinations. Um, it's easiest to work if you work it in a linen, um, only just because the holes are, you know, it's a looser weave than cotton. Like batik would be not the first choice I would make with Sashiko only because it's such a tight weave. Um, transferring designs. So if you just want to work a basic Sashiko stitch, you could mark out a grid. This is a little sample I did for you based on a one inch grid. All I did was I took a ruler, right, and, and made one inch lines with my chalk pencil. And then I just hand drew these little ovals here. And this is a very common classic Sashiko pattern. The one that I did on the quilt that I showed you earlier, I basically just did lines and then I worked, uh, I, I, I kind of turned them into like little bamboo stalks. And then all of the leaves, the bamboo leaves you saw was drawn just this way by hand. And I would draw a few at a time and stitch it and then draw some more and stitch it because as you can see, you know, if you, as you work it, what'll happen is that your hands will just naturally rub that chalk off and it'll, it'll just be gone before you even know it. So, um, you know, you can transfer a whole design and then keep 
you transfer a whole design with the sterile paper and then keep marking it with this, going over it again when it starts to fade and it's hard to stitch into. So that is the pattern based on a one inch drawing that you wouldn't even need to print anything out of. You're literally just making an oval and a flower shape in each one, super easy. Now, if you wanted to work something more complicated, if you Google Sasha Co and just hit images, you'll find all kinds of different um, patterns. And there, some are overall patterns and some are um, motifs. As you can see here, I've worked this one already. Um, and so I, there's tape on it still. And, and I'm gonna use this paper to transfer the design onto this indigo fabric for you too so you can see how that works with the serral paper. All right, and then I... So this is the paper that I used to stitch, to transfer that design originally. And you can see, you can tell which side has the chalk on it. So that would go face down on your fabric and then the pattern would go face up and you know just center it how you want to I'm not I'm not trying to be really careful here I'm just wanting to show you how great and easy it is to work now I have already worked a um, black ballpoint pen on here so this time I'm going to use pink um, and this chalk paper I've already used, you can use it over and over again because really you're just transferring the lines and so there's a lot of chalk left to be used up. So even though the lines are dotted, I am not going to sit, it would take too long to transfer all the dotted lines, so I'm just drawing straight lines. And then we'll address that when we actually work the stitching. We'll talk about some of the do's and the don'ts. Even though I'm not really a rules person, sometimes the rules actually do better. It's not just for tradition's sake. All right, okay, so let's see what that looks like. Lift up our design, chalk paper, and I've got this wonderful crisp image that I can go ahead and trace from. So here's what we're going for when we're working Sasha Co. I can't claim to be a complete expert at Sasha Co. I do my best, which is all we can really do. Um, I really enjoy it. I think it's great. Um, I like the effectiveness. You know, where I didn't take the stitching all the way into the middle, I left it open so that little um, sort of circle could be in the middle of the star. And if I were to work the stitching straight across, I would lose that effect. So that's kind of one of the rules, one of the kind of necessary um, rules of Sashiko is to not, you know, your lines shouldn't be crossing over each other. They should stop at the intersection. When working Sashiko, it's a bit different than quilting. We're, we're looking for four to eight stitches per inch. And, you know, what we're going for in, in any case is even stitches. And so, you know, what I tried to do in each line here was just put four stitches lying on top. Some Sasha Co. stitchers will want to do an even stitch on the top and the bottom, and some Sasha Co. Um, stitchers believe that the top stitch should be a little bit longer than the bottom stitch. I say pick a way that you like and stay consistent as you can. I really don't have anything that is considered true Sasha Co. thread. So what I'm using yet, <laughs> you know, I'm going to be shopping. I don't know, i got to get some of that stuff. But really what I'm using is this DMC um, size 10 crochet cotton. And that is just fine for these purposes. I, you know, I've used DMC before. You could use floss as, in as many different um, strands as you'd like. And you know my little needle trick about squeezing that thread and just threading the needle onto the thread versus thread onto the needle. All right, a quilter's knot is you're basically just gonna hold the end in the needle. One, two, three, pinch it all together. and you've got this great knot. So I'm not gonna start in the middle because I'll rub all of the chalk off. I'm gonna just start here at the edge. And I'm gonna come up right on that line. And when I stitch this, I think to myself, one eighth inch. 
So I go down at an eighth of an inch and I come up at an eighth of an inch. Down, up, down. Now here I'm only working three just because I, I really should have started a little bit earlier, but since it's at the edge, it doesn't really matter. Here's one of the rules in Sashiko. Don't turn a corner in one thread. So I've hit that corner there. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull it all the way through. Oopsie. I'm gonna just pull it all the way through and then because I am at a, at a turn here, I'm gonna come up and start that line again fresh. Now in Sashiko, it's a little different than quilting and that in quilting, you, you move the, you hoop your fabric and you move the needle. But in Sashiko, it's more of you keep the needle still and you gather the fabric onto your needle. Um, I'm working away from myself. I find that easier or I'll work right to left. But you see, I'm keeping the needle pretty still and just gathering, thinking one eighth, one eighth, one eighth. So I've got one, two, three, four. You can just put that in the light, stitches. And then I'm gonna go down right at the edge of that circle. Pull it through. Now whenever, and this is true with any embroidery, sashiko or whatever, I actually will straighten. I rarely use a hoop, so I do this a lot. I'll work a line and then I'll pull the fabric. Because otherwise, if I pull this too tight, of course, look, I've got gathering and the whole thing will be puckered. So just once you pull that through, just you'll find it automatic. You'll just boop, just pull those stitches apart. And then I'll just spin the fabric around. And then just work away, you know, so the needle's pointing away and I'm gathering the fabric onto the needle. And then down. And pull slowly, you know, don't go nuts. Otherwise your thread is gonna rip. I always use a longer thread than people recommend. I probably use a yard of thread every time I stitch. I hate changing. So see, I've got one, two, three, four. And at the fourth one, I go down. Hold my thumb on this thread so it doesn't get all tangly and doesn't pull the fabric. And then yank the fabric and I've got this great little square. So the next thing I wanna do um, I could work this, I guess, but really this will probably just go into a seam, so I'm not going to bother with that. What I want to do is come back to that center. So I'm not going to just, you know, you really don't want to go an inch, otherwise that's going to get caught on stuff, plus the fabric is thin and you could see it. So we're just going to weave in. I'm on the back here now. And it takes a minute to do this, but you'll be glad you did because it keeps everything all nice and neat on the back. Even though this will get stitched down on something, it is nice to have your threads just tucked in. I don't know, feels good. You can do it on every one or you can skip. It's not a big deal, just, just get it so that your, your working thread is running along the line of stitches. And then I'll just pop right out here. Okay. And now I can really go in any direction I want to. Now that's great because I can just work one flower, then work the next flower petal, then the next flower petal. And eventually uh, my chalk lines will wear off as I'm, you can tell it's kind of getting sort of faded up here, much darker down here. So I try not to touch any of this down here. Um, and again, if it gets too faded, of course, I'll just take my trusty little sew line chalk pencil. Let's just pretend this one's all faded out. And I'll just run over the line again. This is a mechanical pencil. These are the best things that ever invented. It's a mechanical pencil, so you can keep refilling it. Um, it comes in all different colors, but I rarely use anything but white. And I've heard either the yellow or the blue doesn't come out of fabric very well, so just watch for that. Um, but the white, is, I've had no issues with. I absolutely love this pencil. And it gives such a nice, fine line that you really know where to go. 
you know where to stitch. So again, I've got my one, two, three, four showing, and I'm going to go right just either into the corner, depending on where you end up. Remember, I'm not turning the corner in one line. Otherwise, it just gets really weird. It doesn't look right. I'm just going to give it a little pull, make sure everything is laying flat. All right, and then come back around. And this is a very relaxing thing to be doing. It's just really fun. Um, and these little samples, I'm sure that one day they'll get stitched into something. And here I am going, uh, doing something a little different, going left to right, but still gathering the fabric onto the needle. I really don't love using a hoop, so any chance I can to get away from that, I'm all about it. And then once you have all of those stitched out, you can go back and look at this again. And then I may sew this onto a quilt or, you know, a sampler or something, just do running stitches, or I can even work little dots or motifs inside of here, you know, really just kind of let your imagination run wild. So that's regular um, sashiko stitching, and it is really amazing, you know, going back to talk about function, versus just, you know, for decorative purposes. When I take this linen fabric, how flimsy it is and see-through, and then you take this sasha coat, it's incredible the difference of how much stronger and sturdier this fabric is than this one. Again, the, uh, the mandala that we're gonna be doing starts with a running stitch, a big stitch quilt uh, method, which is like sasha coat, this running stitch. And so I'm gonna go ahead and work another um, piece that I've already traced out for you and this is now within a quilt sandwich. This is not, I'm going to have a harder time getting nice even stitches because I'm working through a background fabric and a cotton batting. If you were to use a wool batting, uh, it's easier to stitch through. Wool is so much easier to stitch through. When I'm hand quilting, I wouldn't even consider using anything but wool because it's like butter. It's it's incredible the difference. So if you've been hand quilting through cotton, um, you're probably way better at it than I am. So um, so I here I have a you know my batting, backing fabric, and let's see if I can't try to get my four stitches in my line here. And then still working away from me, working directly on that line, still in my head thinking one eighth inch, one eighth inch, one eighth inch. It's like a little mantra, kind of helps. One eighth inch. I'm going to get four, but it looks like I'm going to go a little deeper into that hole, so three might be. Yeah, I don't love that. So if you do that and you go too far, just go ahead and take this off your needle. Take that last stitch out. Just doing the tiniest bite and working it like quilting, you know, where you go straight down into it and come straight back up. Now, Sashiko, there are thimbles that you would wear here. And the thimble pad would be here. So you can push it through. Um, I have not tried that yet. I probably will when I get my sashiko thread. I'll go ahead and get a thimble just to try the technique because I think it's kind of fun to, you know, do things properly and then make my own rules after that. One eighth inch. One eighth inch. Yep, and through quilting, we definitely could use a thimble because that was kind of tough to get through. And down. No, 
now as far as bringing the needle through to the center of the flower, now we really don't have to go to the back. We can just go through the quilting, go through the batting, which is kind of great. A little faster that way. Come up with that circle. starting to look very quilty and very tactile and very cool, so I'm kind of loving this. And this is just how the mandala is, and when you work the mandala background fabric is uh, that Radiance fabric by Robert Kaufman, which is, I think, don't quote me for sure, but it's a, it's like 60% silk and 40 cotton or vice versa or something like that. It's, it's a wonderful fabric. Um, and that is what the mandala is stitched on. And so when you get your kit, if you get a kit, um, you'll that will be included. But if not, it, that's fine too. You just grab some, grab a fat quarter. That's all you need. We're starting with an 18-inch piece, or do cotton if you're not loving the you know that silky look. No big deal. I've got a pretty tight commercial fabric on the back as well, so it's a little tighter. Um, to get in and of course this thick cotton batting um, but once you get the stitches boy it's really it's really puffy and great and so hold that up to the light and see if you can see this little quilt um, this would actually make a good little mug rug wouldn't it so I will work the rest of this and then I'll come back and show it to you all quilted and puffed out I finished the quilted sample and you can see it's it's uh, a lot different than the this is like a coat of armor. <laughs> it's really it's really heavy and really great. So you can definitely see how you know holding things together with just some crochet cotton, some sashiko cotton, and some quilting um, definitely strengthens and and uh, gives warmth to some fabric. Um, and then this piece is fun too because this can be added to a quilt later. Um, again, with just some hand stitching and and uh, whatever. So I'll definitely be using those. Looks like I better make a ode to Japan quilt soon, doesn't it? Um, okay, so for the rest of December, I will be taking some time to enjoy the holidays and make some gifts. The next uh, Cross Craft Sunday video will come out January 1st, which I know is a Monday. So that will be the start of our stitch along. So in the meantime, go ahead and review some of the videos and... Um, gather your materials. If you have any questions whatsoever, whether it's on materials to gather, or if maybe you're on the fence of doing the project and you um, have a couple questions or need some help or some advice, please feel free to email me. Again, my email is nittycat at comcast.net. You can reply here to the bottom of the video. Um, and I'm happy to answer anything for you and um, see if we can't get you stitching with us. Until then, happy Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy everything, and we'll see you in the new year.